this is Aroka Mandate on Aroka Heart Matters. Uh, last week, I did problem solve that. We are going to deal on how can I get my entire heart committed to a relationship, committed to what I do, and yet not be heartbroken. Today, we'll be dealing with Guarding against heartbreak. Guarding against heartbreak. How do I ensure that I am not heartbroken? You see, they always tell you that uh, love is a dangerous thing to lose. Those who love and those who are heartbroken. When your heart is committed to a thing, if it fails, your heart sinks. Today, by the special grace of the Almighty God, in a few minutes, God is going to help us to discover how possibly can a man get wholly and heartily involved with a thing, especially marriage, especially relationship, and yet not be heartbroken. Let us pray. Eternal King, we thank you. We give you all the glory. We dedicate this moment unto you, King. Okay? You are the teacher. You are the mold, we are the clear. Touch our lives, breath upon your word, and let your name be highly exalted in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I want to start on this note that it is practically impossible for a man, practically impossible for a man to love anything or anybody and not be heartbroken when that thing fails or when that thing falls short of your expectation. In other words, you step into a relationship with a particular intent on getting married. You get married with a particular intent on having it sweet all the way. Having your guy not cheat on you, having your woman not cheat on you. Suffering all through hard times and difficult times, only for you to wake up one morning and hey, woman don't carry the ring for her. Just kind of, it, it goes through your heart, deep into your heart, without even rehearsal or you intending to have it. During the Second World War, a young man built a lot of warships. One of the warships was named the Bismarck. History had it that each time any of his warships go to war, he said a part of his heart goes to war. And when people are on the lookout for how many people, how many soldiers, how many of the military men that are coming home, he was on the lookout if his ship or ships was or will come in. Because the Bible says where the heart of the man is, is where his treasure is. So it is what he treasures. So it is practically, literally, impossible for a man to love another man or love a woman or love whatever you do and not be broken in the heart when anything goes wrong with that particular thing. But today we are going to discover how possible it is for a man to live above it. We've had cases and accounts of people who committed suicide. A few months ago, a young man was writing from Kedah, India, or where he was in India. He first of all posted a message that he was begging the girl, if you leave me, I go die to this one and that one. And after a while, we saw him shot. And he died. That girl is still alive. It is foolishness to take your life because of someone else. It is foolishness. Because you suffer here and you suffer there. When a man takes his life, he never stands to be forgiven before God. Listen to me, the life you live is a gift from God. 
And every gift from God has a responsibility attached to it. God gave it to you as a gift to it. He is expecting you to make judicious use of that precious gift. You don't have right to take your life. And listen to me, a whole lot of people are gradually taking their lives. There's what we call agents of denudation. Gradual eating up of the lifespan of the strength of health. Many diseases of the modern man is asso are associated to the heart of the man. The human psyche and the heart of the man. What we call uh, 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 psychosomatic diseases, psychosomatic ailments. Ailments that are connected to the human psyche. These are prevalent in the course of time in this channel. We're going to delve into this. We're going to delve deeply and exhaustively into psychosomatic ailments. We can go browse it. You will discover how much we have allowed fears, tensions to kill a lot of people in the society. The fear of things are more terrible than even the things themselves. Now, man allowing fears to occupy his heart has been responsible for a whole lot of things. Man killing himself and man killing the next person. Sometimes we are afraid of what does not even exist. Yes. Over 70% of the human fears and tensions are illusions. They never happen and they will never happen. Those things that come with some frantic clouds, some tensions in the air. Oh, if you don't do this by next week, this is going to happen. Check your life. Over 70% of them never alighted, never happened, never came to be. Something will always happen before that time. For so many persons who have ended up killing themselves either by incurring certain level of internal damages in their bodies because of fears and tension. Now, for the case of this study, we are going to look at the life of an individual in the Bible. I picked on her because of how much her life taught me in the light of you not allowing situations that you cannot control to destroy your happiness. That lady is Leah. You might have heard about her. Leah was the first wife of Mr. Jacob. Uncle Jacob, in the book of Genesis chapter 29, fell in love with a young lady called Rachel because Rachel was fair. If you read from verse 30, 31 down, you discover that the Bible told us Rachel was fair-skinned and she was beautiful. Leah, the Bible said, had tender eyes. That was all she had. It wasn't her fault. Are you suffering from what is not your fault? You didn't have a child. It wasn't your fault. You're not very physically endowed. In the Bible says that some people are wonderfully made and others are, are fearfully made. Are you fearfully made? It's, it's not your fault. This is how you were made. So Leah wasn't very privileged with Ruth. And Jacob didn't love her. It's one thing not to be loved. It's another thing to be told you are not loved. Everything Jacob did, he made Leah know how much she was to be loved. But Leah didn't fight. Leah didn't kill herself. Leah was the first daughter. Have you ever been preferred? Have you ever seen yourself playing a second fiddle? Has your husband ever made you to understand how much he preferred another woman over you? That's what he faced. Not once, not twice. It was on a regular occurrence. It was on a regular basis. This sat her in the face every day. But the Bible told us something. The Bible said that when God saw 
that Lee was a dead. Genesis 29, from verse 31 now. He said, when God saw that Lee was a dead, Lee succeeded because she didn't fight her battles. She let God fight for her. She went to God and said, Lord, you said I am wonderfully made. You said everything you made was good. If I am good, why is this my husband treating me like a, a scumbag? Why is he handling me like I am not good? If you feel I am good, then establish my goodness. Her life was not a life that is born of self-defense or self-assertions. She lived her life before God. The solution to the problem, the only way to win the battles of the heart is when you present your heart and temple it before God. And not allow what any man or woman thinks about you to truncate the realities of your convictions. What you are convinced about yourself. Because you don't have money for a few years, you had issues with your work in, in a few years' time, it didn't mean God is not faithful. It didn't mean you are not a hardworking man. It didn't make you a failure. When your wife or your husband tries to define you as one, first, do not agree with it, because that is not the truth. And also, do not try to go out of God's ways to prove a point. One, don't accept it. You are not a failure. You are not wrongly designed. You are not above God. You are not a mistake. Two, don't let yourself in a bid to prove him or her wrong. Get into the wrong place. Leah stood her ground. She didn't feel it. She kept her place. And in the end, she was honored. In the end, she was glorified. In the end, she was accepted. In the end, she laughed last. And they told us that he that laughed last, laughed best. Leah began to realize that she might not be physically appealing, but there was a beauty deposit in her heart. And she, she, she gave herself to that beauty. The beauty of life, the greatest beauty any woman or man will ever know or have is the beauty of your soul. That when people come around you, they feel your sweetness, your sincerity, your humility, your service, your sacrifice, your selflessness, your correctability. You are so sweet. Such a sweet fellow that leaves an indelible mark that this person leaves and always dreams of seeing you once again. Not because you're trying to impress anyone, but this is who you are. You have imbibed and developed and maximized this sweet spirit. Deep down your heart, you are full of love, the love of God. Leah was a woman that was tender-eyed. And I tell you, the eye of a man is a mirror to his heart. She had a tender heart. That's why she had a tender eye. That was all she had. What do you have? I sit down sometimes, I watch you when I walk on the road. I get angry at some things I see. Some of them, the only thing they have, I'm sorry, is what they can see. What you can see physically is more real. You have a good skin. You spend all the millions on your skin. You're wonderfully, beautifully skinned. And you dress well. It's not. That's why so many of you are not living with a man. Beauty, physical beauty can attract a man. He can never keep a man. 
Thank you. And if you're wondering what is wrong with you, start going for deliverances. Deliverance from what? They will deliver you from everything else, but they won't deliver you from you. The deliverance you need is yourself. You need to be delivered from yourself, from the foolishness of your head. Because you do not trade trivials. That's trivial. The flesh is trivial. It doesn't have an eternal quality. It doesn't have an eternal ability. When, when Leah saw she was hated, she made God discover she was hated. The Bible says, when God saw, God has always known all things. The Bible says that God knows the end from the beginning. Why was it that time that God discovered that Leah was it? Because it was when Leah made him know, I can't meddle with this. I am not a part of this. When you see hatred, when you discover that your husband or things are not going right in your home, what do you do? You go confront the man. You, every woman, are, over 70, 80% of women who confront their men always lose that marriage. Proverbs 14, verse 1, the Bible says that a wise woman lose her home. That man you are complaining about, the another woman will come in and still live with him and be happy. Do not use foolishness to destroy your relationship. The guy, the guy in the note, that's come back. Ah, go for me. That kind of guy here, I see that kind of guy. The next one you meet will be worse than that. You keep on telling stories that I think one before you know what is happening. Wrinkles are everywhere. You use Mary Kay. There are times Mary Kay becomes a problem because they start building gutters on your face. You can't hide your edge anymore. Why don't you tell yourself the truth? Humble yourself. As a young man, when will you tell yourself the truth? And stop deceiving yourself and deceiving the world. You can convince people and tell lies against innocent person. Over a relationship, you destroy with your own hands. But you can never lie to your conscience. And you never lie to posterity. Time will always prove things the way they really are. Leah was hated. She had every reason in the world to pack up. She had every reason in the world to fight back. She never did. But she stood her ground and she won her. I'm going to tell you how she was. First step, she accepted herself for who she was. She didn't go whining. She didn't go complaining. And she did it. I'm sure they will have people go for plastic surgery to spoil their lives. You are perfectly made. You're purely and perfectly branded. And your own guy is out there. Don't go destroying yourself. That he said you are not right. That she said you are not right. He is not the end of the world. She is not the end of the world. Leah accepted herself. She became grateful to God for who she was. That's one. Two, she discovered her strength. Was her strength? She was a tender-eyed woman. She was a tender-hearted woman. Like I told you, our eyes are mirrors to our hearts. Every well-trained person knows you, what is in your heart by looking into your eyes. She discovered her strength. What was your strength? Do you have a strength? Do you have a virtue? This character, this quality that you have. That is so endearing, that is so godly. Hold on to it, develop it, build it. He said, Watch that man who is diligent in his duty. He said, He will stand before kings and not men. Walk on what God has given to you. Every, every cloud has a silver lining. Every cloud has a silver lining. There is beauty God has deposited in your spirit. Develop it in your heart, give your heart to it. Build it and maximize it, and you will come out beautiful. And your beauty will be, will, will be revealed to all men. Leah discovered this, and she gave herself to that. And she began to build herself, and she began to maximize what God has supposed to do. Three, she didn't fight her battles. She handed herself over to God. In Genesis 29, the ending part of it, the Bible said that when, Leah, when God saw that Leah was a dead, 
Mary did not allow herself to fight. She brought God into her matter. She involved God. So many girls go to Juju. So many men go to Juju. A guy told a lady, he said, if I get your name and your mother's name, you will not know when you will marry me. You will never be free until you give me five children. After five is in the evening. When a woman has given birth to five children, that's after five in the evening. She came back out of the marriage. The man said, this is where you will realize yourself. So many ladies are living under such diabolic bondages. Under such diabolic bondages. One day it will expire. You man that you are tying a woman just because marriage is not by force. You can't get the best out of a person by force. You will never. What is not freely given can never be a person. Leah's life became a lesson. I want to make you understand that this same Leah, if you read the book of Genesis chapter 49, the last five, five verses there, when Jacob was to die, he gave instruction that he will be buried in the same Machpelah, the ground cave that was bought by Abraham, where Abraham and Sarah were buried. Isaac and Rebekah were buried. That he buried Leah. He didn't bury Rachel there. He said, bury me near my wife, Leah. Why not Rachel? Rachel was not even buried in that ground because Rachel happened to be this a replica of this woman who allowed the physical appeals to destroy her internal personality. She was an idol worshiper. She was not pure. She was not a godly person. Do not let your physical beauty destroy you. Do not let your financial advantage as a man, as a woman, destroy you. Do not let your background, you were born into a wealthy family, do not let, whatever is your advantage, don't let it destroy you. Rachel was so advantaged. The Bible says she was fair and beautiful and well favored. Genesis chapter 29 and chapter 30. The Bible says she was well favored and beautiful. If well favored means Every man that sees her will like her. I do like that. Every man that sees you will like you. How many people will you marry? You are living with a man and they are telling you, come, I will marry you. And your head is 25 in number. When you leave that man, are you sure that person will marry you? And if you are sure, how many? If you still live with that one, but another one, and other ones will still come to deceive you and make you feel like you are bigger than that one. You keep on rolling until you might not end up with them. Do not let your blessings become a curse. Do not let the beauty God has given to you ruin your joy and your happiness and your bond. I want to summarize some close to this by making you understand that if he was able to hold on, the legacy of the home, so before God, it was Leah that even Jacob eventually settled down with. Because it was where Abraham and Sarah were buried, Isaac and Rebekah were buried, that Jacob and Leah, not Jacob and Rachel, were buried. So Leah had victory in the end. You will have victory in the end. When you let God fight this battle, when you let God take over the situation, do not fight for yourself. Do not defend yourself. Do not try to become who you are not. There are battles and there are, there are strategies that are our strategies. David in 1 Samuel chapter 17, in confronting Goliath, Saul gave him clothing, the military garments, the war years to shield him from the attack of the enemy. The Bible says he moved and he said, I have not mastered this. I have not approved this. This is not my thing. This is not my thing. Is someone trying to teach you ways of battles? Trying to train you on what you should do to conquer this battle? It's not your thing. 
That's not what they told you in the Bible school. That's not what they told you in the Bible class. That's not what they told you in the scriptures. That's not what the Spirit of God has taught you. And you're trying to learn something because this person told you that's the way it's done. We have been in this before you. They may have been in this before you, but they are not the, the right directors that you need. Why don't you go by what you are used to? By what heaven has always guided you with? Whatever you're going through right now in your relationship, bring it to God. Are they mocking you for who you are? Things you can't help. You didn't make yourself. Your inabilities and inefficiencies. Your insufficiencies and lack of qualifications. You don't have papers. You don't have uh, good tongues. You don't have good command of English language. Someone is looking for someone like you. A pastor friend, an evangelist told me once, he married his wife because the sweetest part of her life was that she lives. That was one of he, he told me when he left the program, he came for a program, the lady sang. She, she was limping. One leg was longer than the other. When he left, that was the sweetest part of the woman that he loved. Today they are married. Sweet babies in the home. If she was wearing a bowler in one leg to balance the leg, maybe that guy wouldn't have fallen in love. I'm not telling you what happened abroad in this country, Nigeria. Tito I want to put it to you. That weakness you're hiding and ashamed of might be the strength that you're selling for it. Bring it to God. God will brush it up and will refine it and it will attract your miracle. Close your eyes and let's go to the Lord in prayer. Eternal Father, by your mandate and grace, I speak over these lives. Healing upon your own. Deliverance upon your own. Wherever you have fought your own battles, may the Lord have mercy on you. Deliver you and fight for you and give you victory in the end. You will end in victory. It will end in your victory. It will end in your victory. It will end in your testimony. In the name of Jesus Christ. Near ended in a testimony. Her battle she ended in a testimony of victory. So shall it be for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Do send us your questions and your experience.